Hey, what's up everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Uh, this is sponsored by MortgageMarketingCoach.com. And today we are bringing you the one, the only Devin Peterson, who literally tripled his production, tripled his commissions, tripled his income in two months. Yes, you heard me right. Two months. How the hell does that happen? How okay. does that happen? happen that's what we're going to get into today and uh so devin thanks for hanging with us today brother this is going to be fun i appreciate it thanks for that little intro there and uh i'm not gonna lie i'm a little bit nervous doing this doing our little weekly <laughs> things is no big deal i got the people up there i can see everybody this is uh live and it'll be on your anyway so let's just go right. for it it's, it's, all good, man. it's all good you eat this for breakfast brother you do this all day every day mixing and mingling with realtors with clients you're just hanging with D and we're That's talking right. about uh, the one and only Devin Peterson, which uh, you're well acquainted with. And we're talking about your story and it's uh, quite a fresh one because we just started working together just a few months ago. Right. Um, so why don't we just start from kind of the basics and uh, acquaint people with who you are, uh, where you're located, uh, how long you've been in the business and right. what inspired you to get in the business? Why don't we start there? Got it. Okay. I'll start back uh, several years ago. Uh, brief history on me. Uh, started out a long time ago in the salon spa industry. Had about 18 years clocked in there and decided uh, I'm, I'm tired of things with hair. So I was done with that. <laughs> and and uh, a buddy Just of mine. Just keep it on the chin. Just keep it on the chin. That's what we live with. Mix it up. You know, we got to mix it up. <laughs> keep it real. Uh, so a buddy of mine who was in the mortgage business, he was like, uh, hey, you know, you should really get, get into this. He's like, I know you're you know, good with numbers. You know, you're a business owner. You've done this stuff. This, this is an easy, uh, easy transition for you. I said, well, I've always been interested in that. Uh, flipped properties for a couple of years, too, for a while and uh, kind of did my thing there. Uh, then kind of morphed into working at a title company doing uh, when the refi boom was big, uh, you know, 2012, 13 area right around there. And um I spent a lot of time doing that, did about a thousand closings or so with them. And I got really, you know, uh, well uh, uh, acclimated with all the documents and things like that. I'm like, I do kind of miss this a little bit, you know, because I had dabbled into it, it uh, just a smidgen of it. Actually, in 2006, I got licensed for a couple of weeks and I saw a lot of shady stuff going on. The company was that I said, yeah, I'm not going to be part of that. And I was licensed for about a month. I'm like, yeah, I'm out. So I pulled my cord on that one. Anyway, flipped some houses, did some stuff, worked at a title company, did some closings and did my thing. And my buddy's like, you really need to get back into this. this is now the time. It's all above board. Don Frank did its thing for us. Really immersive training program that was really kind of cool for several months and did that and uh, worked at this other company for a little while. And it was nice. Um, it was good for me. It was good to get my feet wet doing that. And I worked with three really uh, heavy producers. Well, everything's relative, but for me, they were really, really big producers. Uh, one guy was around 30 something million. One guy was uh, topped out the last year at 60 and one guy was 65. And I got connected with them. And uh, because I had a business background and did what I did before in the other industries, they're like, hey, would you mind kind of helping us, you know, keep track of our clients, do some organizational things and like that, you know, basic pipeline management and things like that. I'm like, cool, I'll do that. Well, these are you know relatively big producers you got 150 million dollar pipeline over a year you know a year you're, you're managing all these numbers you're like okay grinding away keeping track of you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients i'm like man there's got to be a better way so i'm gonna i think i'm just gonna you know kind of cut the cord on this and just do my own thing and just be my own lo i did right. a couple of one two three four five loans a year on my own but i'd like i can focus you know all this amount of effort and energy into this spot and just do a few loans on my own and do what i need to do so i decided to do that and that was, I believe, uh, July of 2017 or so. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a little while and uh, I was really kind of sputtering along and I was I was making really good money doing what I was doing work with those guys. However, once I said I'm done with that, I'm going to go on my own steam. All of a sudden, oh, crap, man, it's it's an eat what you kill industry. And when you're not killing, you're not eating. So right. that got really scary really quick. Uh, so. Long story short, I uh, got into that. I'm like, I, I need some help. And I kind of sputtered around through 2000, uh, the end of 2017, went to a different company because where I was at was kind of imploding. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something different. So I went to this new company. Love it here. It's great. I'm not going to mention names or anything, but I went there and I really enjoyed it. Systems are great. Technology was great. Everything was awesome. But I wasn't. Not that I wasn't great at what I do or a master of my craft or able to do customer service. Like I had that background with the spa industry. I was killing it with the clients. They loved it. Just didn't have enough business. 
Right. Like, okay. I, I need to do something here. You know, I, I mean, I really need to do something. I'm like, I don't know what to do. So like everybody else, you hop on the internet because the internet knows everything. Right. So I go on there and, and, I, and I'm looking and I'm like, holy crap, there's 10,000 programs. There's this dude selling this, this dude doing that. And I think the thing that sparked it for me, and, and I believe you were in an interview on, on a YouTube thing with Dave Savage at one point. And I was That's just right. watching and I'm sitting there going, dude, I'm vibing with this guy. I like him. He seems authentic. He's the real deal from what I can tell. I'm like, all right, so I'll click online. I'll do my thing. I'll reach out, do whatever. Hop on your group. I'm like, oh, I'm going to kind of look around. I go, all right, these are real people, I'm not just trolling each other, doing crap. I go, right. okay, so the next step, we do what we do. We connect with you. We have a little talk. And uh, I don't know if I was your worst uh, first interview or the <laughs> biggest pain in the butt, but I, I grew up nah. good. I mean, uh, I'm no spring chicken. I'm 40 years old. I've been around the block a few times. And I'm like, all right, look, man. Uh, all right, so I got this young kid. I, the way I see it, I go, I got this young kid telling me he's going to make this thing happen. I go, all right, <laughs> guru, let's see what happens. We had our talk. We did our stuff. And I'm like, okay, I got it. I got it. I was listening. And uh, I I don't know if I want to bring this part up, but I was actually, I grilled you really bad in the beginning. I'm like, all right, look, man, I want you to swear on your kids. And you're like, come on, man. You're like, <laughs> real? And I'm like, and you did a great way of avoiding that because who really wants to put their kids in the line, right? Anyway, <laughs> subsequently, fast forward to the end of this thing. I had a personal talk with him. I'm like, you can absolutely make that claim. I said, you could say that and swear on my kids because it is the real deal. It really does do what you say you're going to do. Uh, truth be told, uh, I got way more than I actually anticipated because that was one of the things I said to you. I'm like, look, man, if I sign up and it's just this little flimsy thing with three sheets of paper about here's go get them, kid, and make it happen, <laughs> I'm going to be pissed. You know, I, told you that. I told you that straight up. And it wasn't. I mean, it was an in-depth thing. Uh, I chose uh, one of the leaner programs, but it was perfectly fit for me. And I did the six-week course, and I was kind of just going at it. And it really had meat and substance. And I like that you had so many different layers of additional content. And um, for those of you that know me or were on the you know, class with me, um, I was one of those people who have a challenge. I like to know all the information before I do anything. So I kind of get right. paralyzed by analysis mm -hmm. and I need to know those answers. But you helped me to kind of break through that and say, look, man, stop. <laughs> Just clear your mind, trust in the process, ignore everything you think you know, and just do what I'm telling you, I guess. That's it. It's six weeks. I'm going to do it. Cool. So signed up, did my thing. I actually printed out, I kid you not, not that it's a monumental amount of money by any stretch of the imagination, but I printed out the thing that I paid. I put it above my computer. So every time I wanted to slack off or go back to Devin's ways of doing business, <laughs> I was like, look up. I go, no, you spent money. Let's do it. So uh -huh. I got I got engaged. I did my thing. I like that. That helped a lot as well. And uh, I just immersed myself in it. I really did. And uh, I, my, one of my favorite things was the weekly uh, web meetings that we do like this, but with the multiple people. And that was fantastic. Uh, it's cool mm -hmm. to hear from different individuals. What I see in a lot of different situations, too, is a lot of professionals don't want to share their value added stuff or their nuggets of information. You know, it's like, oh, I don't want to train or you know, help my competition. That's not like that. We're all from different diverse areas. I'm, I'm from the suburbs of Chicago, by the way. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone chips in and said, look, here's what I've done. Here's what's not working. Here's what's working. And that was really, really helpful. Um, but before that, actually, let me get to the genesis of why I chose to your program to go with you in general. My numbers were not great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was your typical onesie twosie guy. All right. Do you still have me there? All right. Sure. One, one, or, one or two, one or two deals a month. Is that what you mean by the oh, onesie yeah. twosies? So I'll, I'll give you yeah. some numbers real quick so people have a reference. If sure. there's anybody listening who wants these substantial, absurd numbers that make you blow your head off, I'm not that guy. But if you're a new loan officer or a onesie twosie or someone who just wants to get better, this is this is the results. And here's real numbers. 2017, I did barely over $3 million in business. So I did 15 loans, which is one and a quarter a month. And my monthly volume was $255,000. I don't care if you make 75 bips or 250 bips, you can't earn a living. <laughs> this is not going to yeah, happen. That's that's called skinny kid production. Skinny kid production. kid production. Let's be honest. <laughs> so I'm like, something has to happen here. So 2018, I come to the new company and I got great tools and great energy and I'm going to make this happen. Well, okay. I did 30% uh, better. I did just under 4 million for 19 loans at 1.58 loans a month. That's still a joke. Uh, my my volume at that point was uh, 327,000 a month. So that's not good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, look, I need to do something here. And 
I was in a fortunate situation. And for people who are on the fence, this might help you decide that as well. It might even help you decide it if you're in a dire situation. Here's what I mean by that. <clears throat> I was kind of fortunate. I bought my house a couple of years ago and I put a good su substantial amount of money down. So I had a little, little uh, uh, side cash if I needed it there. So I have a couple other revenue streams, very small, but not enough to make the monthly nut by any stretch of the imagination. That being said, 2018 comes around. I'm like, I'm going to do my thing. It didn't work out, obviously, as well as I thought. 19, I'm like, this is the year. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going all in no matter what it takes. Either I'm in this business or I'm out. Pick it, you know? So mm. January, two loans, 437. February, one loan, 184 grand. Mm. March, two loans for 144,000. Behind the scenes of that, we spoke on and signed up on uh, January 23rd. Started getting my stuff, started learning my lessons, started doing my thing. I ended on three, six, the results are as follows. But what I was saying about making sure you're in a, in a tight spot, it's actually a good thing. And here's why I took a HELOC out of my house. I said, well, I got some equity. I'm gonna take a hundred grand out. Past story is that other year where I was getting by, how can anybody get by? I'm making, you know, you know, 40, 50 grand. Well, I was subsidizing myself by using that money on the HELOC. Mm -hmm. That was actually a problem because I was artificially thinking, well, I'm doing okay. I'm still making it. When in reality, you're not, you're not making no. it at all. And, and the best no, you're thing- you're up your equity and you're stacking up oh, interest. Sure. I, it's embarrassing at some point because I'm actually pretty good with most numbers, but I'm like, when it came to myself, I was, I was lying to myself. We had talked about it in one of our classes too. Uh, David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me, that book. One of the chapters is get in the mirror, get serious, yell at yourself, call yourself out. I'm like, dude- yeah, Tell the truth. Dude, you're not a loan officer. You're not a producing loan officer making money who's actually going to survive in this business. You're kidding yourself. Do you want to yeah. be in this business? I said to myself, yes, I do. Are you going to do what it takes to get there? I said, yes, I am. Then what are you effing around for? Let's get to it. Right. That's when I signed up with you guys there. And I had read the book as I were talking about it in the class too. But before that, I was already getting started with that. That was my aha moment to do it. Got in with you. Now it all kind of ties back together. I tend to go off in tangents. So I came back <laughs> together, got with you, and I actually implemented what I said I was going to do. So as of now, now these are not significant things, but percentage-wise, it's great for me, okay? I have a certain number that I need to know that I need to hit. I'm not even halfway to where I really want to be, but here's where I'm at now. April, I closed four loans for just shy of a million. Just truth be told, I've never even closed a million, but for me, that's pretty good. At least yeah. I know I can live off that. I have a That's like triple. Income. That's like triple your production. It is. Right? It's 2.6 right there. Yeah. May, the loans that I already have in the pipeline now, closing out before May 15th is going to be 1,056,000. So 2.97%. So that's a 300% increase from what I was doing. So the stuff actually works. Um, you just got to get into it. You got to believe it. You got to really... Uh, Listen to other people and believe that they might have some information. You know, I see some stuff on the Facebook sometimes. The Facebook, I don't know, like I'm 100 years old. I see stuff <laughs> on Facebook and people are like, well, what does this guy know? What does he know? It's like, it doesn't matter if an individual is or isn't in the mortgage industry. If you have a nugget of knowledge that can be utilized in your life to get you to where you need to be, who cares the source or, you know, whatever got you there? It works. You know, it clearly yeah. does. So for me, the biggest thing that I found was, it was having the tools of being able to engage with realtors from a whole different mindset. And what I mean by that is um, you guys would say some very basic stuff. And it was so simple. One of the sentences you popped up and I literally was going, I don't have an answer for this. What's your unique value uh, proposition? I'm like, yeah, I close loans fast. I'm a good guy. Look at my reviews. People like me and my rates are you know pretty decent. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody gives a crap. Right. And I've got a pulse and I've got a pulse. Yeah, right, right, right. Here. right. So, <laughs> that's how you do it. I mean, it, and it flipped the script for me was coming from a mindset of, okay, stop treating this as a job, treat it as a business. In a business, what? how do businesses succeed? Helping others to achieve their goals. Light bulb. Got it. In tune with your program saying, okay, cool. How can I, now I was actually like a consultant. How can I help you as a real estate agent grow your business? literally diving in. And that's why I love the discovery meetings, getting in there, doing a deep dive. I've even expanded a couple questions beyond the list you provided for us, which is an amazing list. And I went through and people are like, I've never been asked all these questions before. And it's actually quite a revelation for them. They're going, wow, I got some leaks in my game that I really need to work on. 
and, and it, they're kind of like, wow, that was weird. You know, they don't, they don't expect that. So you do that. Never once did I ask, can I do your loans? Can you give me a shot? Give me your worst deal. None of that crap. He just didn't do it. I'm here to learn about you, here to help you build your business. Law of reciprocation will eventually kick in and you might want to trust me and do some stuff. That's all in the background. Yeah. Then after that, you have the show and tell. Here's some things. After our discussion, what we got, here's some things that I think can work for you. You got some leaks in your game. You're looking good here. Not so good here. Here are some solutions. You're giving them something. You're coming from a place of giving. You know, Otherwise, when you're going there normally, you're coming from a, a, a mindset of scarcity, thinking, oh, there's not enough loans out there. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to whatever. This gives you the confidence to go in there and say, look, I'm coming here to help you grow your business, period, end of story. And from then, it just kind of comes to you, which is neat. The one thing we talked about one of our meetings that I really like was I went to one. Um, I was introduced to somebody through Facebook, and they said, hey, you really got to connect with Devin, you know, do your thing and see what you know happens. She's a newer agent. I'm like, okay, cool. I made the connection, did our thing. I said, I'd like to set up a meeting. You know, first we got to see if we vibe, you know, and she's like, okay, cool. So we chatted for a few minutes. We liked each other. I said, all right, the next meeting we're going to set up is going to be the discovery meeting. She goes, what's that? I go, kind of going to interrogate you a little bit and actually get down to a deep dive under the hood of your business and see what's going on. She's like, okay, no one's ever said that. Let's give that a go. So I went to her <laughs> office and I did that. Pardon me, I'm dying. Hmm. Went there and um, you take a breath. You can take a breath too if you want while you're having your sip. You know, I, I did take dose. a breath. I'm good. So I met, with <laughs> girl, I met with her, right? And I'm sitting, I'm talking to her in her office. All of a sudden, the broker owner comes in and we're doing our thing. And I'm like, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Didn't miss a beat. You know, you know, cordials, get them out of the way. Did my thing. I'm back into tune because I'm, I'm in an interview here. Her interview, right. not mine. So exactly. we're in there doing the interview and she comes in, she goes, Who's interviewing who? She was like all the, the, the broker owner was going, wait a minute. I thought you were seeing if you was going to work. No, no, no. I, I have this amount of time in my day, this amount of people that I can work with. This is the amount of loans I want to do. I have to be very careful about who is that I, is that I work with and I choose them wisely and to make sure we're a good fit. And the broker owner just stops. She goes, I've never heard a loan officer say that. And she goes, I'll leave you guys be. And she walks away and does her thing. <laughs> we can keep going back and forth. I'll fast forward some of the details, but I kid you not. At the end, when I'm done talking with her, uh, she goes, how did I do? Like she was trying to please me to pass that test. And I get it. Let me in when you let me in. <laughs> exactly it. That was the whole aha moment. That was the, one of the first real ones I did. I did a couple sample discovery meetings on what I call my warm agents, the one that sent me a couple here and there, but they used it a couple people. And that was a little more informal. This was the first real one. And uh, that was amazing. And uh, so that was a really, really cool uh, light bulb moment for me is how to flip the table on it, not in a way to take advantage of the situation, but in your mindset saying, I'm here to see what it is that you're doing well, could be better in bad, and then provide those solutions. So we meet back around the next week. We do our uh, show and tell. I'm like, here's some stuff for you. And uh, I got her signed up with the agent marketing and all the stuff like that. She's like, this is fascinating. She goes, this is really amazing. Broker owner pops her head out on our second meeting. She goes, she goes, oh, I see you're back. I go, yeah, I'm back. And uh, she goes, good. And she was like really pleased by that, which was kind of neat. And I showed her some stuff. I go, come over here. I want to show you this. And she's like, wait a minute. C can I do that too? I'm like, yes, I've already signed up your account. I've already uploaded your profile. You're all set. I just need you to throw your MLS number in there and throw in some properties and make it active. She's like, hold on a minute. She goes to her computer, starts clicking. She goes, I just put up 10 properties. I'm like, good for you. Oh, by the way, there's no cost to this. You know, she's like, wait, what? She was astounded. So uh, a huge <laughs> value add coming into a new office. They have a couple agents there who are newer as well. Uh, they're all kind of coming around this way too. That led me into, she actually has a, uh, relationship with a builder who has a small section of land they're building these homes about 20 homes or so they're about anywhere from four to five hundred thousand dollars or so she goes so let's talk about preferred lender so anyway we start talking about that kind of stuff so that opened up that avenue and it's kind of neat how it kind of creates its own critical mass and there's gravity and then this mm -hmm. person wants to talk to you and then this person wants to do something and you know that's really kind of neat and then and it, and it gives you that energy where it's like Okay, I'm not down and out. I'm going to make this happen. Things are coming together. And it just, it just, it really is a mindset change. And I think often people discount that a lot as a lot of hooey or whatever like that, or, you know, existential stuff, that, you know, that I don't know if I get into, but you have to, you got to understand it's the energy you're putting out is the energy you're going to get back. And it really is a thing. I mean, it really is. So right. uh, 
Absolutely. And and you had that energy before we met. Let's be real. When I had you on the first uh, breakthrough yeah. call, you had the same energy. But, you know, it kind of reminds me of that saying you can be motivated. You can be optimistic. But if you're heading east looking for the sunset, you got a problem, you know. Yes. So you were motivated, but you're using a flawed strategy. And that's why you were, you know, Mike Tyson uh, behind, uh, you know, bars and you could not unleash mm -hmm. your superpower. You you were the, the Superman with the kryptonite and you didn't have the ability to unleash your superpower because you're using a flawed strategy. And so that sometimes is the biggest thing. And this cool thing about doing these interviews with you is that I could just kick back and relax. I mean, I, I just I just introduced you and you hit the ground running and here we are now like 20 minutes later. And I think you took a couple breaths in one sip and uh, and you've been unleashing just an incredible parable of awesome uh, from the time before we met to the time where we did. And then beyond, let's rewind the tape a little bit and talk about something that I think a lot of people will resonate with. And that's the worst part about you being a onesie twosie guy doing, uh, you know, one or two loans a month oh, okay. when you were Superman without your cape on yeah. and with the kryptonite in your pockets. What? Tell me about the most painful part of being at, in that season of your life when you knew you were capable of more, but, you know, you were trudging through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet. and You just couldn't freaking figure out how to get yourself beyond that glass ceiling. What was the worst part for you in that? Well, that kind of also ties into the thing where I had that little bit of a safety net that I think was a false security blanket. Because if I looked at it from, look, uh, while I had a couple other streams and I wasn't in a direct panic yet, if I looked at it from, this is my job, this is my career, this is my main income stream, can you survive on this? And the answer was absolutely not. So what I did was I created an artificial rock bottom, if you will. I said, here's what I'm doing. Before I signed up for your class, I said this, look, I'm not going to, uh, for the poker players out there, I wasn't going to play with scared money. So what I was trying to do is set myself up so I could really dive in and be focused without being panicked. Mm. However, what I did was I said, look, take a little drop from my HELOC. I'm going to set aside, since this course was six weeks, I'm like, I'm paying two months of my mortgages, set aside right away, and my monthly bills. And here's money for the course. I cut myself off of it. Now I have the artificial rock bottom slash panic going. Right. When this is over. There is no bailout. There is yeah. no nothing. There so, is no safety net. Right. And the ultimate nuclear option was I have a rental property with my wife. I'm like, crap, what if I had to leave my, what I feel is a very beautiful, nice home and downsize to something that's one third of that size and go into that. I go, yeah, that's an option. But man, that's not what I promised my wife when we started our life together. And mm -hmm. that's the wrong direction. And that's an absolute uh, mindset of scarcity, which you should fear. Don't look that way. You say, no, I need to do this. I promise this. I'm capable of this. How do I get there? So I gave myself that, that line in the sand, said, okay, starting the course, paid for stuff. That was it. Now I had no option because I didn't have a, well, I'll just turn back to the piggy bank and bail me out. There's no yeah. bailing you out. And yeah. I had to actually wrap my head around that and believe that because that was very scary to me. I mean, genuinely, I'm like, dude, what, imagine if you say you want to stay here. Are you going to run this into the ground? Because the other option was keep doing the same thing that I was doing, which was subsidizing my lifestyle, burn out all the money there, have to sell the house, burn out any other options I had, cash out any retirement, cash out the emergency fund and go, great. Now I'm at absolute zero, like a 16-year-old kid with their first job, with a kid at home and a wife. What the hell am I doing? You can't wait till you get to that point. No. Nope. So you have to tie it in earlier and create that thing like oh, you're on the edge of the cliff now. I have to make this happen. And I was able to pull that uh, off and flip it in my script in my head, which caused a minor panic, which said, let's do this. But so, that's what that's what I call positive pressure. When yeah. you when you actually see the adversity, the challenge as an opportunity, as opposed to woe is me, sucks to be me, victim mentality and playing the victim role and playing small and shrinking and settling and just hoping for the best and hoping the nightmare will go away. You flipped it on its head. and You said, OK, now it's balls to the wall. There's no safety net. I'm all in. I'm willing to do whatever it freaking takes. And it's win or freaking die. There is no backup plan. Right. And 
that was the positive pressure you needed, wasn't it? Yeah, it absolutely was. And, and, it, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm actually just thankful that I thought of doing it that way because by human nature in general, we're lazy people in a way. We take the path of least resistance. How can yeah. I get to the point as easy as way possible? And I could have very easily kept subsidizing myself and burning myself out to where I'm like, well, I've kind of run out of steam. I'm really out of it. And now I'm really in trouble. And I'm like, there has to be a better way. So it, it was creating that line. It's like, okay, now I'm motivated, you know? So mm-hmm. they say a necessity is the mother of all invention. I'm like, well, I didn't have to invent this. You had the program, which is great. So my necessity was the mother of implementation, if you will. Yes. So yes. I did that and um, huge, huge difference. And, and it was, and it was, doing the work, you know, there, there is no magic bullet, you know, what would you say, what would you say was your most potent driving motivation? You mentioned a few things you mentioned, you know, this is not what my wife signed up for. This is not what uh, I promised her when we got married, you're a man, your, your natural desire as dad, as husband is to provide, but tell folks, and it doesn't necessarily matter if they're women or a man, everyone can really attune to and understand what it means to be human is beyond just wanting dollars in the wallet. There's, there's oh, some yeah. inner motivations and then there's the real nerve motivation that you're willing to literally yeah. die for. What was the nerve motivation for you that was driving you more than anything else? Um, embarrassment, embarrassment as a man or a woman, I'm not saying man, mm. manly, but I mean, as an individual who is, uh, told their spouse that they're going to provide for their family and said, here's what I'm going to do moving forward. And here's what I promise. And here's what I'm going to do. And not being able to uh, fulfill that obligation. That's embarrassing. That's mm. embarrassing as a person will say. So yeah. um, that was my biggest motivation factor. It was really hard to tell my wife, Hey babe, uh, yeah, we're doing fine. Of course we're making all the bills as this is shrinking, 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 right. shrinking. And I'm like, you're really not. I mean, you're fooling yourself back to David Goggins mirror. Do right. it. You're you're totally fooling yourself because you know you're not making it, and it was just getting to that point where it really was just an embarrassment with myself. I'm like, I know I'm better than this. I'm just not applying myself, and why am I being so lazy about it? And why am I thinking I have all the answers? Because clearly, what I'm doing wasn't working. Mm-hmm. So we all know this. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Well, right. I did it for 17, I did three million. Yeah, but I increased 33% in 18. You're still broke, okay? Right. You need to yeah. five-fold this crap to actually get to make a living, you know? I right. Mean, anybody in today's economy nowadays, I don't care how big or small your house or your needs are, you need to make 120 grand just to live in general in life. I mean, it is what it is, at least in where I'm at in this area here. Absolutely. Fine, but don't just settle on that. Do you want to just get by or do you want to thrive? Do you want to provide a savings? Do you want to be able to go on vacations with your family? Do you want to be able to do stuff? So that was the big factor for mm-hmm. me. It's like, Noticing that, oh, now I'm actually not saving money like I used to. Oh, I'm going to actually lower my percentage on my 401k. Oh, I'm not going to make that. Event. What are you doing? You're scaling back your lifestyle with the scarcity mindset and just trying to try to falsely make yourself feel that things are okay. No, they're, right. not. they're not. And no. that was very scary. It was scary. It was embarrassing. Um and, and that's it. You know, your pride gets in the way. And that, that can really be the downfall, I think, is you're like, no, no, everything's okay. It's okay. But it's not, you know. Well, you make a really good point. What's that? You make a really good point around Davy Goggins Mirror. Anyone, guys, have you uh, never read or listened to the audiobook of You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins? You need to give yourself the gift of the Goggins because he will rock your freaking world. The guy is a beast beyond beast the guy is inspiring he's real he's authentic and he just spills the beans on a life of trials tribulations and challenges and how he's overcome them and this goggins mirror is a metaphor for tell the truth tell the truth to yourself and so you had that moment of truth and as the saying goes the truth shall set you free but first it's going to piss you right off that's the piece i add in But first, it's going to piss you right off. And it's that positive perturbance that actually allows you to have the foundation, a solid foundation of truth by by which and from which to create a new life. Because you created the life you have now. And guess what? You're also the creator of the new life you want to create that you can create if you'll just simply tell the truth. So you came to that moment of truth. 
You realize that your way ain't working. You realize that if you stay on this trajectory, you're headed towards failure, disappointment, embarrassment, humiliation, letting your family down, letting yourself down, not showing up as the husband and the father you're called and committed to being. Yep. And then, of course, you know, we met. But before we met, I'm curious, did you have some, quote unquote, other solutions or other investments you made that didn't exactly pan out. Tell us about that. Tell us about some of the uh, other things you tried that just didn't pan out, didn't work, weren't what they cra were cracked up to be. Um, let's see. Now I'm kind of drawing a blank. I know I may have told you many different things. I'm drawing a blank as we talk about that. Just anything that you were spinning oh. your wheels with that you were being taught or that you bought that just wasn't freaking working like they were promising. A lot of them were just uh, uh, thinly veiled things. I spent a few hundred bucks on this, a few hundred bucks on that. And it just, nothing had any real meat or substance to it. You know, you, you, when I got your stuff, that's why I said, you know, you, you kind of under promised and over delivered, you know, it actually had a bunch of different things that I, I didn't even know was an option, which is cool. I expected to hear some stuff. I expected a little rah, rah. I expected a little, okay, here's something where you can try this cool thing. And I'll try to get that one nugget. Like anytime you go to a seminar, anytime you go to a class, you always try to get that one or two nuggets that can propel you to the next thing. Um, I went to the mastermind. I don't know if I said I went to a, I went to a thing uh, someplace <laughs> somewhere, and I'm like, this is where I'm going to learn the thing in 2018. I went there. I go, come on, this is the crap that I'm already doing. No offense to the group there that does that. So what was the, what, what was the crap you were already doing? Give us some uh, specifics, well, uh, you know, some examples of things you were doing that wasn't mind. working. Uh, follow up with your clients. Uh, Make sure that, uh, you know, you're doing these thank you things. Make sure, I mean, just small ticky tack items that most people are doing. And a lot of the What about with realtors? What, what kind that? of stuff were you, were you what, what kind of stuff were you being taught to do with realtors that wasn't working? Oh, just, you know, go, go to the office, do the same stuff. And then there's, there's another program out there that tell, which I would, did not go with, you know, you got to call them over again, call them over again. Let me tell you something. I'm friends, genuinely friends with a lot of my real estate agents now. They're like, there's nothing more than we hate than that, you know, but you just kind of yeah. think you're just going like to every Monday call, call 40 realtors every Monday. Every right? Monday you see your phone. <laughs> ignored. Come on. That's the dumbest thing on the planet, in my opinion. I mean, fine. But my thing is I talk to them and they say the same thing. It's like kind of like when you have a title rep, you're a loan officer comes in and talks to them, like, Hey, how's it going? How's it going? I got my guy. I love him. I do my thing. Yeah. Thanks for the, the chat. Yo, oh, cool ball. You know, uh, Nobody cares, you know? So right. when you keep showing up, you keep showing up unannounced, you, you, what are you going to do? Wear them down into submission? It's it's not like your four-year-old is asking you for a treat over and over again. You're like, fine, here, here you go. That's it. <laughs> I mean, you have to oblige at some point. They don't want to work with you for that. So you got to like, how can I do something? Add value. What's value? And what does that mean? You don't even know what it means until you ask them. The amazing thing about that in the discovery meeting is, they're spilling their guts to you. They're giving you the full story. They're telling right. you, these are the things that hurt me. These are the places I'm having a problem in my business. These are the places that I need worked on. And you're like, awesome. I can help fulfill that because I know what you as an individual need. Right. Now find the solution. And then that's going to make them go, okay, this guy's provided something. Oh, wait a minute. He hasn't even asked me for business yet. Give. Find something to give. So, but anyway, back to the other classes and things like that I've, that I've done. It was always these little, hey, do this rah rah motivation, small little things here and there, and it just didn't have any substance to it. You know, oh my God, just having like the, the weekly videos that I was able to send out to the agents. I did the Devin Money Moments. You got the newsletter, uh, getting me in touch with the agent marketing thing. Uh, you know, specifically for anybody that's working in little areas where they have like I call them boutique type real estate agents, where it's not the big box places. That is a gold mine to align yourself with because they're usually uh, tightly nestled in a, in a small community area. They don't have a lot of stuff. But if you can come and say, hey, I've got this suite of things that can do these property specific websites. They can do all this different collateral and swag stuff per your property. They can do lead capture tech stuff on and on and on. And I'm providing it to you for nothing, essentially. You know, pay your 23 bucks to have it tied to your MLS. You're done. Wait, what? This is mm -hmm. free? Yeah. It, 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 that is the best money spent ever. And it's not even expensive. You know, if you get one deal the entire year, you paid for it. I mean, it doesn't even matter. I mean, it's amazing. Right. So um, you delivered above and beyond what I thought I was going to get. Uh, and that really impressed me because most people don't do that. So. Yeah. Well, you know, 
common sense ain't so common nowadays. And uh, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So it doesn't take much to be outstanding nowadays, considering most people just do bare minimums, yeah. let alone uh, actually deliver what they promise. So I appreciate that. Now, let's talk about the beginning of you launching because you you got to this moment of truth you decided mm -hmm. screw it let's do it i got to do something my way ain't working let's seek help from the professionals you pulled the trigger and you went all in and yep. then of course now the real work begins oh, yeah. and there's a whole lot coming at you in terms of the, the modules the training the step-by-step -step action plans the mm -hmm. execution and there's a new mindset you're applying to yourself. And so tell us about the real deal, not, not, not the sugar-coated version, but the real deal about some of the stuff that perhaps at the very beginning of the journey with me, you were a little skeptical in trying, uh, but once you decided, screw it, let's do it, I have dropped this dough in my own investment in myself, I might as well do it. Yeah, You were actually kind of pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. Tell us about that skeptical step into this new realm called Planet Doran and the uh, you know realtor marketing acceleration formula. What did you do that you thought was, uh, I don't know if this will work, but let's give it a shot. My biggest thing that I felt had uh, the biggest impact for me was, I don't know, I don't remember the module number itself because now it all just kind of congeals in your head, but I don't know if it was module three for what I was doing, but once I was able to grasp and understand uh, changing the mindset and the paradigm shift in terms of wanting to help the agents and coming up from that point for me, believe it or not, this most simple nugget for me was the, uh, the discovery sheet. Look, I'm going to interview you and stuff, take a deep dive under your hood and actually get an understanding of your business. That was the biggest thing for me. I was so skeptical. I'm like, Oh, this crap's not going to, I mean, there's no way. Come on. <laughs> in the beginning, too, you know, we, we, we never argued, but I'm always like, I need to know, I need to know, I need to know. And you're like, dude, Stop with the ready and fire. <laughs> ready fire, aim later. Just just do action. Action right. can be action. We all know that. Uh, just do something. Even doing the wrong thing, as long as you're acting on something, it still creates its own momentum and energy. You can correct course later, but just go. Just do. Yeah. That I had a real hard time with. Talk about skeptical. I'm like, I was full emergency break on. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I need to do this. You know. And some of your stuff that I had that was going through, I would look into different things like, well, what exactly is this? What exactly is that? And what exactly, and what's the, I just needed to know all the finite details. Right. I'm like, forget it. I'm like, just stop. So I just yeah. started clicking through. Click, yes, click, sign up. Agent marketing, uh-huh. Which one do you want? Give me the best. Do this. I'm like, just do it. And <laughs> I did it. I was like, oh, wait, this is actually working now. What the hell is tough to my own? <laughs> yeah, fine, I'm signed up. Great. You want to do this? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll check out these newsletters. Okay, what about the videos? Yep, this looks great. Add some videos. And all of a sudden things started happening. I go, oh look, videos are going on on my behalf. I don't have to do anything. Oh look, this is going on over here. This is great. Oh look, an email popped in and okay, I can send this out to clients. I'm like, this is cool. I'm like, okay, I just finally started to do it. The slow imagine that, hey? Imagine I, I, that, imagine it actually that. works yeah. when you work it. Imagine <laughs> that. Exactly. And then when I got the initial response, even from uh, what I call my warm agents, the ones I was like softly trying out, kind of a beta version of that uh, discovery thing, they're like, Devin, this is really interesting stuff. These are really cool questions. And it actually just having them answer the questions out loud, they said that in itself was beneficial to them. They go, Devin, I didn't realize how much I'm not focusing on or areas that I'm missing of opportunities or things like that. And I'm like, great. You know, that already was a value add right there. Mm -hmm. So by doing that kind of stuff for me, it was, it was the way to engage with an agent to do it from a different point of view versus come help me, you know, please give me loans, you know, whatever like that. It's I'm coming to help you. It's like you're, you're kind of welcome with open arms at that point. They almost don't know what to say. You know, they're mm -hmm. kind of like, wait, what do you, you don't, you're not asking for anything. You're not coming up there with the, you know, the sucker leech on your headphone saying, give me business, give me business. Right. And they're not used to that. And it's quite refreshing for them. Um, so come from a place of giving and trying to actually help and understand their stuff. That was my biggest aha moment. I didn't think any of it was going to work and uh, it did. It really made a difference and it led to more and more things, which is neat. And then what it does, it also kind of puts the wind at your back. So it gives you that momentum. I can't explain why. I don't know how it works, but it just does. And you're like, oh, that little thing worked and that thing. And then you try something else. That didn't work so well. Okay, well, I'm going to massage it a little bit. Oh, look, now that works better. 
just do it. Just go out there yep. and make something happen. And then you, you learn as you go along. You're going to stumble. Fine. Get up, course correct, figure it out, and make it happen. Uh, that's a, That was a big thing. That was a really big thing. And then, you, of course, you know, you got your email templates, your speed to lead when it comes to leads coming in, things like that. You know, have it do it for you versus you stumbling on your own stuff. So really made a big difference. I like that a lot. Yeah. That's awesome. I love the just do it. Like St. Nike says, just do you, you it. Know. Ready, fire, aim. You don't need to look all the way up the corridor, around the corner, down the block, and every little step in between, you just need to know your next step. And that was a huge breakthrough for you is just ready, fire, aim, stay in action and it's operation implementation. And so now you, we went, you, you enrolled in worry in March, you tripled your production from your average was 300 K in production before you enrolled. So that was your baseline in March. You did just shy of a million in April, or is it May that you're doing 1.5 million? January, February, March. I did a blended average of that. It was okay, 355. So, 355 or so it was April. It was April, April, <laughs> April that you did just shy of a million and then May 1.5 million. So that that's really five X your baseline, which I'm is sorry. pretty dang freaking awesome. 1.05. So it was just over a million. Oh, 1.05. Really okay. So there you go. So yeah, that's exactly what we talked about as we headlined yeah. this interview is tr you've tripled your production in literally two months, which is pretty dang epic. Most people can't even do that in two years, let alone two months. And uh, to be able to do that, obviously, it's one thing to do it one time. It's another thing to be able to do it consistently and continue to build on that momentum. And uh, so how's the pipe looking for, for May and June as that momentum mounts? Oh, it's good. Uh, it, it's good. And I, another thing, too, it's like I, I used to get really, really concerned. And this is more of a, an operational thing versus anything. But it used to be, oh, I'm getting nervous. I don't have anything in the pipeline right now for June or July. I don't even panic at all because I know that I got a whole list of people who are constantly looking, actively searching with pre-approvals out there doing their thing. So as long as you keep that stream going, it's good. The reason being it used to, I don't know, back in the day, take, you know, 30, 40, you know, 60 days to close a loan. No way. If you're not averaging at least 30 days or less now, you know, you should, you should be doing at least 30 days or less. I'm averaging about three weeks now. And I use that as a point of difference for my agents. I tell them, please go out and do three week contracts. Number one, it stops them from tire kicking around in other places too, because they only got three weeks and they're already into it halfway after a week and a half. Mm -hmm. And it makes their offers a little more uh, shinier. It's a shinier object, you know, kind Absolutely. of solid. Uh, um, but the pipeline's already there. So I'm very confident because I already have people who are kind of still looking, still looking. So I know I'm going to have four or five more pop off in June. So that concern that I don't have any on the board for June doesn't concern me anymore because I know I can easily do two and three closes now. So that uh, it's and tell us tell us about the the partners you forged in the last two months in terms of the caliber of the partners, the synergy of the partners, the reciprocal uh, respect and appreciation and business that is flowing reciprocally and mutually. Uh, tell us about just how that shifted over the last two months in comparison to what you're doing before. For me, I don't know about others, but for me. Even my warm agents that I talk to on a regular basis here, uh, you call, goes the voicemail, you call, maybe this, every other now and then they'll pick up, hey, Dev, how's it going? It's changed in that sense now. It's like, hey, what's going on? Because it's just from a different point of view again. Those have become more entrenched. My onesies, twosies, people doing stuff here and there have now solidified into you're my guy, you're who I'm going with. Uh, All in. What's that? All in. All in. And that newer agent that I found, she goes, no, stop, you're my guy. You don't. I, it doesn't matter. You're my guy. That's it. Stop, so that was stop, me. Stop. No, no, she did. I said, well, what else? She goes, stop. You, you've won. I'm in. And it wasn't I wore it down. She goes, I don't see how it gets better from that point in terms of what I can offer. So she was all in. Um, another thing, too, I didn't mention, but I noticed I'm on notes right here. There was one agent that I really liked. I go, this guy really puts together great presentations, listing presentations, great Facebook presence and things like that. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to I'll try to hook up with this guy and just say, hey, I'd like to reach out, whatever like that. Doesn't really know me too much. So he's like, well, I'm busy. I'm busy. You know, the normal things. I said, I understand that, you know, whatever. We go for our stuff. But um, what I did was I tried something a little unconventional. <clears throat> I We rarely, we, I rarely get clients that come to us first for a pre-approval and then search an agent. It's usually uh, they've already got their stuff and they come through me or they find me one way or another. That being said, I had one. 
I go, I'm like, okay, what do I do with this nugget? My first instinct is, well, reward the people who are loyal to you and take care of that. I go, but they know me, they understand me, and they're doing what they're doing. Fine. I need to take this little nugget and I need to make it an investment. So that agent that I wanted, I made sure he got that deal. Now I'm going to force you to work with me so you can see the way I act, the see way the way I do stuff. Since he wouldn't go from the approach of the discovery meeting yet, it's going to be, well, I'm just going to show you how I work and then what people say and the way the clients feel. So we had a dialogue today and I funny, I kid you not, today it just came up. He's like, hey, I wanted to invite you to this realtor event that we've got going on, whatever. It's in uh, May 20th. He's like, our May 29th. He's like, you got to check it out. You got to go. I'm like, hey, thanks a lot for the invite, man. I appreciate it. Tell me a little more about that. I got on the call with him. So I said, by the way, your loan's going great. You'll be clear to close by Friday. But tell me more about this event you just invited me to. So he goes, well, you know, this and that. And and we hit it off. We talked for about 25 minutes. So soon we'll have that discovery call and we'll be actually getting in that way as well, too. And uh, I genuinely like him. Good fit. So that has made a huge difference. And uh, just having that energy to be able to make those things happen and come from that approach helps a lot. What for you now? We're only, what, three months after you enrolled, something like that? Two and a what? half, somewhere two in that range. Months. Yeah, two, two and a half, I think it is. Somewhere. Is it just two months? Well, it's two months since I've been out. Uh, I started on uh, January 23rd. I was done on 3-6. So I'm two months out now, and I'm so already you- I'm already a baseline of like, cool. I did what I said I was going to do for my wife. Now I got to put the gravy on and get it back to eight or ten loans. <laughs> right. So since you enrolled, if we, we if we consider you started in February, you had Feb, you had March. Uh, so it's basically from the time you enrolled, we'll call it three months. Um, so you've had some momentum now in yeah. building and you're just getting warmed up. You ain't done. You've just begun. No. Tell us about what you're noticing, the contrast between your life in 2017, your life in 2018 and your life now in May of 2019, what's the most meaningful, most uh, valuable, most life-changing difference you're feeling in your life now versus three, four months ago? I'm not scared. (laughs) I'm not scared. It's that simple. You know, it's Uh, like, I just literally, that first point when I almost hit that million, I go, I've never hit a million before. And I know most people do that all the time. They may laugh at that. I go, but that was a milestone for me. So that's kind right. of cool. And, Absolutely. And, and that meets my requirement to completely do what I need to do with my living without any additional income streams or my wife's income. I'm like, okay, I've already hit that goal. But it's just the momentum is just building. I'm like, well, we're going to definitely supersede that and keep going, which is great. But there's no fear now. I'm not going, crap, uh, what do I do? What pocket do I reach into for the next mortgage? Or what do I do for this thing? Or I, Mm. that thought has evaporated and that's the best feeling in the world is knowing, okay, cool. I can breathe for a second, not take my foot off the gas and keep pushing Mm -hmm. and doing the work, but emotionally and mentally I can financially breathe going, okay, things are going to be just fine. That is the biggest ah thing for me. That's huge. That's beautiful, man. Two months. That's huge. I mean, something, you know, you, you hear it, you hear, I'm not scared, but when you've been scared for months or years or decades, um, sometimes it's like the saying, the fish doesn't know he's in water until he gets out. You know, you just, some, most people are living scared every day and they don't realize there's any other way to live because they're just so used to it. So now you've got a, a new life. It's called certainty. It's called yeah. confidence. It's called peace of mind. And this thing called a million dollars a month is your floor. It's not your right. ceiling. It's your floor. Right. It's under yeah. your feet. And now you have the ability to have the standard that bare, bare, bare minimum for me as a bare minimum standard, if yeah. I'm really messing things up, is a million. That's right. like bottom of the barrel. That's not yeah. the the you know, insurmountable mountain I've never climbed, that's bottom of the barrel. If I really flub up, I'm hitting a million, right? That's the and- new standard, right? You said something that was really cool too. You meant about the fish doesn't know he's in water until he's out. I consider that the same exact thing as most people feel. Mine was more example of a frog in the boiling water. If you mm. put a frog or anything in a thing of boiling water right away, it's gonna scramble to get out. It goes, this is awful, this is terrible. I gotta get out of here. However, if the frog is sitting in the pot and it slowly heats up, slowly heats right. up. Well, mine was, I'm not making a lot of money, but I got a little extra. I'll pay that bill. 
I didn't make any money this month. Well, okay, well, I got my savings, you know. Yeah. I'm not making any money. Well, I got a hundred grand. I pull out the HELOC. Okay, I'm not making a little hotter. Yeah, wait a minute. Eventually, you're gonna boil. So, yep. uh, yeah, I turned the time heat up really, really high and decided it's time to get out of this mess. Yeah, so. time to leap out of that shit and get into real life yeah. living, not just existing, but really living, not just surviving, but thriving. And how great is it? Great does it feel? I know the answer, but I have to hear from you, man to man. How great does it feel? to be able to own your power as provider now and to be the man your wife married and to own your shit as provider. How great does that feel? It feels great. I, I felt that my entire life, except this last couple of years when things started going down the pisser and the right. fact that I was uh, unwilling to genuinely acknowledge the trouble I was in. Right. Uh, the subsidy was, I wish I didn't have that because I would have got off should have got off the pot, right? So I yeah. wish I would have not had that safety net. So I would have got off it earlier and I would have said, you know what, let's make a difference. Uh, but it took a little while. Hey, we're at where we at and we all we can do. So at least I got there. And that's the part that really makes a difference. doesn't matter and, where you're off, how you got there, start now. And it's a great reminder that what we tolerate, we enable and what we yeah. enable persists. And sometimes the reason why we're not where we want to be is because we tolerate it the way it freaking is. It's not because we're not capable of more. It's just because we have such low standards that we don't do whatever it freaking takes to get the result we want because we soften it. We say it's not so bad or it'll get better or we pull out the HELOC and we, uh, you know, cover up the shortfall by getting into reoccurring debt or dipping into savings or all the above. And so sometimes the biggest game changing shift that comes out of this course is just to raise your standards and say, I will not accept anything less, period. End of story. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly because it. What, because yeah. what we tolerate, we enable, and what, what, what we enable persists. So way to raise your standards, brother. Super Thanks. proud of you, super excited for you. What are you most excited about in your life right now? Now that you're two and a half, three months into this thing, and obviously this is just the beginning, not the end. What are you most excited about moving forward? Um, in terms of this, is just exponentially growing my production to a point of where I need it to be in my mind, where I wanna go, like you said, the million mark, that, that's now the floor, that's okay. That's standard operating procedure. Now it's to get to the point where I want to be. And luckily, um, I don't have these astronomical goals. I don't want to be the $100 million producer. Uh, like I said, I'm 48 years old. Uh, oh, my biggest excitement right now, you want to talk about celebrations like we do every uh, Friday, right? Hell, hells yeah. Uh, my wife's pregnant again, so uh, we're going to have a new baby. Those so boys can swim, baby. Thank you. That's our <laughs> biggest celebration. And that That's was awesome. Uh, you know, getting to where I want it to be, which is not sky high, but it's higher than where it is now so that I can do the things I need to do, have the time to spend with my family and actually enjoy them and not be worried about stuff. That's, That's my awesome, favorite. man. Congratulations, man. All that hard work's finally starting to pay off, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you got two bullet torches under your buns to go out there and slay some dragons. Right? That's right. You got it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. With four kids, you know, it took me four kids to finally come to realize they're a hell of a lot easier to make than to raise. And I always uh, like to say before I had four kids, success was optional. Now it's That's mandatory. Right. That's right. So talk about some positive pressure. Every kid is like another blowtorch under your arse to get going and slay some dragons and make things happen. So exactly. that's great. Some more positive pressure. You can't beat that. We know no, the power of that. That's, a good <laughs> that's awesome, cool. man. Well, I'm super, uh, super excited to see what culminates is, as you continue to take everything that you've uh, applied and assimilated in the short time we've been on the journey together. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is literally just the genesis, just the beginning, the seedling yeah. of uh, m monumental avalanches of awesome that are about to forthcome and uh, un unleash in your life as you continue to just build upon this momentum. And what I really appreciate you about you, Devin, is, uh, you know, you're not only someone who's obviously willing to take the leap and to step into the unknown and to stretch yourself into your comfort zone and to be coachable. But I love, love, love the fact that everywhere you go, you're beaming that positive energy. It's infectious. We hear it. We feel it. And there's no doubt in my mind with that positive energy and that extreme ownership that you have where you say, if it is to be, it's up to me. And that coachability of applying the formula that works when you work it, there's no doubt in my mind that whatever production level you want to hit, you'll be able to absolutely crush it and beyond. So keep up the great work, brother. Super proud of you. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.
Hey, it's been our pleasure. And I say our because I'm sure everyone listening and watching has been uh, taking in your energy, your story, uh, the dark season, the challenging season, the struggling and suffering season that you shared in your story. And also hearing about the fact that it ain't over until you win. And that's really the cool part about your story is you didn't quit. You had too much grit to quit and you found an answer. And you're now in that season of life that they want to be, which is breakthroughs, momentum, growth. And so thank you for sharing your story, because without you sharing your story, there's people that are listening to this that can would just be thinking that it's normal to be struggling and suffering and stressing and having sleepless nights and all that shit. I mean, some nope. people literally think that's normal. It's not. You don't nope. have to. You don't have nope. to. It might be normal in you know, the populace at large, but in our world, that ain't normal. That's called doing it the hard way. So if you guys would like to learn about how to do it the smart way, the effective way, the shortest path to the cash way, not the hard way, not grinding, doing freaking cold calling and all that meant madness and nonsense, but going straight to what works. And you'd like to learn about what exactly was the secret sauce behind Devin's breakthrough. I invite you guys to get a masterclass where you can actually learn more about how our system works. I'm gonna post it right on the screen here. It's a complimentary masterclass. It's about 45 minutes to an hour long and you're doing yourself a great service by investing in yourself to listen and watch it because what you're gonna find is that our method of doing business is very different than conventional mortgage marketing. If you want a recipe for conventional results, then listen to the masses and listen to conventional thinking. That's a great way to do it the hard way. If you guys want to learn how to do it the smart way, uh, as Devin shared, the way that allows you to attract as opposed to repel, to be able to come with value where you feel a sense of uh, dignity and worth and a posture of power to be able to come to realtors and to own your power instead of chasing and ass kissing and all that stuff that just makes you feel like, why am I in this, this business sucks. I hate cold calling realtors. Why am I doing this? Yeah. You really need to watch this masterclass. Go to, uh, I don't know if it's showing on the screen properly. Let me fix this. Um, let me just put the triple W on there. Um, there we go, that's better. It's uh, mmcworkshop.com. So that stands for Mortgage Marketing Coach Workshop.com, mmcworkshop.com. Check it out. And you're going to learn how to take control of your pipeline, how to produce your own leads independent of your client database and or realtors so that you have the power now to build stability through diversification, to bring value to your realtor partners. So you call the shots. So they need you more than you need them so that they put you on their speed dial. They make you their exclusive and you have the ability to call the shots in the relationship, not just hoping and wishing and praying. They're going to throw you a bone. Hopefully, maybe sort of kind of if it happens as a last resort loan officer, you don't want to be the last resort loan officer. You want to be the go to. You want to be the exclusive and not to chumps, not the bottom of the barrel, whining, sniveling, complaining bottom feeding producers. You don't want those people because all they do is whine, snivel, complain and do jack diddly squat for your production. They just suck you down. They're energy vampires. You want to be with people who energize you like Devin does. Wouldn't it be awesome to be with other partners that fill you with a sense of excitement and joy and passion for the business that you can feed off their energy and both of you synergistically rise up higher like a rising tide raises all the boats? How awesome would that be to have that be your normal? Well, that would be your normal when you understand what Devin understands and what I understand. So watch this web, uh, this online uh, web class, mmcworkshop.com. I promise you it'll be one of the best invested 45 minutes to an hour you've invested in, in a very long time. Anything else you want to add to that, Devin, before we wrap up? No, just do it. Just do it. Seriously. Just freaking do it. Just take action. Awesome, man. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for your time and thank you for sharing your story. Thank you, man. Take care. All Good right. Well. Thanks. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. This is Devin Peterson coming at you from uh, Chicago that we just interviewed. 
And uh, my name is Doran Aldana, the mortgage marketing coach, coming at you from mortgagemarketingcoach.com, the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Now go forth, engage, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you're going to get massive results. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Peace. Make it a great one.